Hey gang, it's Powerhouse Pam. What is a soul to vanish mobile notary? On today's Maryland Coins notary, notary show is Annette Briggs. She's a legal administrative assistant with over 30 years of intellectual property experience. Her experience is primary in trademarks, although she has some knowledge regarding patent and copyrights. She has worked for several nationally recognized law firms during her career. She has worked with attorneys who have managed several high profile clients, including the United States Olympic Committee, Nintendo, Urban One, Abercrombie and & Finch, and so many more. Annette has been married 40 years to her husband, Alan, and is a pet parent to a cat named Tigger. Annette devotes her spare time and resources to animal advocacy projects, reading, health education, and spending time with her family. So welcome to Maryland Coins, Annette Spriggs. Welcome, Annette. Thank, Thank you. Welcome. Glad to Thank be here. Thank you so much for your patience. Everybody behind the scenes know what that means. And thank you once again for being on Maryland Coins. I'm so excited to talk to you because um, DeAngela Williams, who recommends you, I have a Maryland Coins logo. So I really needed to talk more about how do I get that trademark? What's the process? And I'm so I'm so sure that so many other entrepreneurs want to know the same thing. So thank you and take it away. Well, I'm glad to be here today. And um, as you heard my background, I've been in... I've been working for law firms for almost 40 years and I've been doing IP, which is what trademarks falls under for approximately about 33 years. So um, I have, while I'm not a licensed attorney or paralegal, I have done some paralegal level work in working with my attorneys and I have a good uh, understanding of how the trademark laws work. So mm -hmm. um, anyone that has any questions, please feel free to shout out or uh, I guess post in the chat if you have a question. Um, so for your question, um, Pam, you asked, mm -hmm. you said you had a logo. My group called us, yeah, my group is called Maryland Coin. So I do have a logo that I created. So, but I know it's not officially trademark, mm -hmm. but I know I can use it as a trademark, correct? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And the first suggestion I would make to you is to one, go, which is a free resource on the US, uh, United States Patent and Trademark Office website, which is uh, www.uspto.gov. And they have free resources on there where you can search for either if there's an existing patent if you were interested in doing a patent which that your case is not but for trademarks as well you can search to see if there is an existing trademark that's the same as yours or similar to yours mm -hmm. and um, I would recommend anyone who starts their own business and comes up with their own unique name that they if you intend on conduct, uh, conducting business for long term and you want to protect your business name, particularly if it's something that's unique uh, that you don't want someone else to use, that you do a search on that website. Um, and they have videos as well um, that can show you how to do that, uh, that you would search on the website. You can also search um, what they call a common law search on mm -hmm. what I call Dr. Google. So if you type yeah. in, type in your name of your proposed company or your existing company you can do mm -hmm. a search on the name and if anyone else has a name similar or same as yours it should pop up into uh, the google search and the same thing would happen if you went uh if someone had registered say someone had registered your your actual name of your company mm -hmm. uh if they actually filed an application for the same thing that you have, Maryland Coins Notary Services or uh, whatever the correct name is, um, it will pop up in that database. And if that were the case that someone else already had it, then I would recommend you come up with something different because depending on if they had just applied for it, if they already have moved along in the process, um, they may actually already have a registration. And if that's the case, you will not be able to get one, so. Um, but let's just assume that no one else has it. Mm -hmm. Then I would suggest after we clear it in the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office database, 
that you would file an application to apply for that name. That means no one else can then come and take that name and use it. Um, so you would get protection. Now, just filing the application doesn't give you automatic protection, but it starts the process for you to gain protection. Um, to file an application nowadays, um, they want most applications done electronically and, mm -hmm. and to encourage trademark applicants to do that, they've reduced the cost somewhat. So the minimum you would spend to file just the application would be $250. Um, and that's what they call, um, I think the plus, the plus application. Um, but then the next level would be a 350. And generally speaking, or three, 325, 350, 325, I have to get those straight. Um, but I would recommend you do the, the next tier up, which is the 325 application. And you, you, what you would need is to show them the mark um, of what your, what your trademark is going to be. And being that you have a logo attached to it, you would file for that logo as well. And in your case, Pam, because you have words and a design, we would recommend you do a word and design mark. So it covers both the words and the design that you have created. Okay, word and design. Okay. Yes, and the process yeah. takes any, I mean, the PTO nowadays is, is back behind a little bit. So mm -hmm. um, due to COVID <laughs> as, as everything else is, uh, it generally can take up to a year to 18 months before you go through the entire process. Sometimes it can go quicker, sometimes it can go a little bit slower, depending on how complicated your mark and or design or logo is. But with it, within at least 18 months, you will have, you should, if everything goes along as we would hope, um, you should end up with what they call is a certificate of registration. That will give you protection for your design and your words in the, what they call classes. So um, we would look up on the chart um, to see what class your services would fall under. We would apply for the application in that class that addresses what you are applying for, which is notary services. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you have to pay a certain amount of money per class for the application. So we would have to sit down and figure out how many classes you would need to file for, but at least you have to file for one class. So um, it, along the process, there are fees you pay and they average about anywhere from 100 to $200 per class. So I would say on average, you probably spend from the time you do the filing, probably about $1,500 to get through the whole initial process. Once you receive your certificate of registration at the end of that process, at the point of when you hit five years of using that mark, mm -hmm. you then have to confirm to the PTO that you're still using the mark and they would notify you and say, okay, we need to know if you are continuing to use this mark after five years. And they give you a year to reply to them and confirm that you are using it. And if you are, you file another document, which is about, I think 250, 250 to $300 uh, to confirm that you are still using it. You have to show them a picture of how you're using it since it's online. You would show them a copy of your website if you have one or if you were making labels or whatever you're using that mark on, you'd have to provide them with proof that you are using it. You have to provide them with a date that you first started using it. And up until the present time you do that filing, you do that filing, like I say, for the, between the fifth and the sixth year. Once you, they approve that, then you allow to continue using it for another four years so you all together you get a total of 10 years for that application and then every 10 years after that you have to reapply to continue using it so you get coverage for a total of 10 years at first 
-hmm. And then every 10 years after that, you you have to, re what they call, renew the registration. And there's a fee for that too. So it's somewhere along about $500. To renew it. Well, I mean, if you think it. about it, over 10 years, $150 a year is really not bad. So we're allowed to do it as a payment plan or we have to pay them $1,500 in one so, you pay you pay as you go. yeah you pay as you go okay you pay so not a fifteen hundred dollars straight out it's just fifteen hundred no you pay you pay when you file mm -hmm. and then after you file the during that first process during the process of applying to it to register that mark or that design you then pay like I say, along, they'll ask you certain questions. You respond back with, with what they call an office response. Mm -hmm. And you respond back to them in written form online. Um, then you have to pay a fee depending on what they tell you they need from you. And uh, assuming that no one else has your mark out there and assuming um, that you, you have to go through what they call an opposition period. So if, if somehow we missed that someone actually had a mark close to yours. Mm -hmm. um, they do what they call a publication. So once they say, okay, your mark looks good, we're gonna publish it. And they put it in this book, which is now all electronic. And they put it out there for 30 days. And anyone else out there that has a registration that thinks that your mark is too close to theirs, they can then come back and say, oh no, she can't get that because it's too close to ours. And they would oppose your application. But if that does not happen after the 30 day period, the trademark examiner would say, okay, we didn't get any opposition to your application. So we're gonna move it along. Mm -hmm. And if you have use, then they'll tell you to file what's called a declaration or a statement of use. And you just basically confirm, okay, I started using it on this day and here's a sample of how I'm using it. And you file that with them. You pay a fee when you do that filing. And then they come back in two or three months and say, okay, we accepted that. And then we're gonna move forward to the registration. Mm -hmm. If someone were to oppose you, then we have bigger problems. So we hope that that's the whole purpose of doing a search. Right. You wanna make sure you, you wanna try to mitigate anybody coming back to oppose you before you even file your application because you don't wanna have to spend that money in litigation to prove that you had the mark before that other person that could cost you thousands upon thousands of dollars to defend yourself. So so what? So when we see the TM versus the R, what is the difference in those two marks? There's no difference. Oh, there's uh, no difference. <laughs> not, not technically. Now, okay. some people, some people will put that they have, they have TM or they will put R and they may not really have it because they don't understand how to use it properly. Mm -hmm. But in the eyes of the Patent and Trademark Office, TM and, TM and R mean the same thing, which is registered. It means you've gone through the process and you now have a what's called a federal registration, which is through the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. And once you receive your certificate, you, you are entitled to put that R on any course, on any documentation that you have confirming behind that mark or logo that is registered. So you notify, that's a notification to others that, hey, this is mine, is registered with the Patent and Trademark Office. If you come and try to file something or use my mark in some way without my permission, I can sue you. But since I don't have it, because we had hackers that actually took my design and put it on a t-shirt somewhere. <laughs> it was trying huh? to sell it to the people in my group. <laughs> uh -huh. And that's when I got uh, hip to like, oh my God, I don't have this trademark or register or what, you know, what repercussions do, would they have if I decided to sue? But actually I'm not covered because I don't have that official paperwork, correct? So they can do what they want to do. Well, that's, a, that's <laughs> in your opinion, I know it's not legal advice. Right, really and, and it, dep it depends on, as, as I have another mentor who says, it depends, it uh -huh. depends. <laughs> It depends on how long you had that design or logo out here. It mm. depends on if you can show that you had it out and were using it by a certain period of time. So if you've been using it, say, for a year on the internet, 
on any kind of email correspondence or what have you. And you can prove that by showing somewhere there's a date attached. If you created mm -hmm. a website, a Facebook group to show anywhere that you set it up by a certain date um, and that whoever those hackers were that would try to sell the t-shirts, you could come, you could, well, since they're not filing an app, since they're not trying to trademark it, there's, you could tell them to cease and desist, but you can't really enforce it because you don't technically own it yet. It's not your, I mean, it's your design, but in the eyes of the law, it really doesn't belong to you. Right. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, putting that on a t-shirt also could fall under copyright law as well. But then again, you didn't apply for a copyright either. So I got work to do, I know. <laughs> so I, I would say to anybody in this group, if you have a name that you came up with that you are attached to in any way for your own protection, if it means that much to you, if for your own protection, you should get it on file with the trademark office. And it, it may seem like, well, it's a scary process or it, it costs too much money in the long run. If it's the name that you want to stick with and you want to grow a business under, you have to look at it as a business expense. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just the simple way of looking at it. Um, and like I say, you pay as you go, but you kind of got to know, hey, I'm going to be looking at about $1,500. So put that money, to, even if you don't have fifteen dollars or $1,800 right now, start putting that money to the side so that you can get that application on file as soon as possible and start the process mm -hmm. because along the way, when you file that application, let's say, let's just say you simply don't have the money to respond. They give you six months to respond to most of their responses. Mm -hmm. And in certain instances on certain documentation, you can ask for an extension to submit the documentation that they're asking for. And in those cases, when that has to do with the, the use of the mark, you get up to five extensions. So you could extend that out up to three years, up to 36 months in total. So that's three years. So that gives you three years to show that you're using it or that say, to say, well, I'm not using it yet. And even if you're not using it yet, you can still file an application. You can file what they call an intent to use application. So you okay. may have a design and you haven't started using it yet, but you came up with a logo or a word of, or for a company, a name of your company, you don't have to have use right now. You can just say, hey, I want my company to be called, you know, Soul Advantage Notary Services or Maryland Coins Notary Services. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't started using it yet. You can still file an application. Um, that's what they call an intent to use application. So that means you intend to start using it and they'll give you an additional time to start using it. Um, but since you've been using already, I would say file, file a, what they call a use-based application because you already have already started using it. And it costs the same amount of money. It doesn't make a what difference. What was that called? Just, if you already have use, existing use oh. of that name or logo, you would file what's called a use-based application. Oh, okay. Um, and when you, when you file the initial application, they're gonna ask you, do you have current use or not? That's one of the questions mm -hmm. that you have to answer. Um, and you tell them either I have existing use or I don't. And then they go from there. I mean, you proceed to file the application, but the process kind of deviates off on one, one way or the other, depending on whether you have use or you don't have use. It's the same process. It's just the, what the documents are called something slightly different but you still have mm -hmm. to prove the same thing. So this is all something you can do on your own. Do you really need a trademark attorney? Because I've seen them advertise on Instagram. So do you really need a trademark attorney to handle this process for you? The technical answer to that is no, you could do it yourself. Mm -hmm. But the correct or better answer is <laughs> if you don't understand what trademarks are and how to respond to the questions, you're going to have to eventually come back and talk to an attorney. 
And when right. I say attorney, I mean at least a paralegal and mm -hmm. or an attorney. And the other thing is I've seen, I've, <laughs> I've worked with enough law firms and seen people that file their own applications. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, when you come, when you file an application and you come too close to an existing mark that's already somewhere out, you're, you know, somewhere out there close. To, when I say close, it doesn't have to be the exact name, doesn't have to be the exact logo, but it's mm -hmm. close enough that some big name company sees it because they have people watching. They get what they call a watch service notice. And they have mm -hmm. companies, that's all they do is they go and they search the PTO database every day and they report back to companies that they work for. Oh, this mark just published, this mark just published. And then they send a report to the attorneys and or the companies. And then they say, oh, okay, go after that person, that person, that person. And I've seen people that do their own thing. And usually mm -hmm. what happens, at the end, they end up losing. I've never seen, I, let's put it this way. I'm not saying there aren't people that can't do their own and make it through. But mm -hmm. truly, if you don't know what you're doing, the lawyers who know what they're doing, they can get you to back down and stop using your mark because you don't know the law. And they're going to use the law against you. So and you're going to pay either way. So you mess up pay now and do right. preventive measures instead of waiting until it's going to cost right. you way more. Exactly. All right, gang, this is Powerhouse Pan Waters with Maryland Coins Notary Show. You are welcome to come in and ask your questions now um, with Annette Spriggs. Annette, do you have an official title or are you just Annette Spriggs? <laughs> I'm just the next priest. <laughs> <laughs> so um, D'Angelo usually starts us off with a question. So D'Angelo, what's your question of the day? <laughs> um, let's see, what could I ask that I can pretend I don't know the answer to? Um, just suppose, <laughs> just suppose like um, I'm using Pam as an example. Um, Pam has been using her, her, um, her Very mark, coin. her mark, mm -hmm. has been using her mark since since I've known her, uh -huh. and then this person decides to use her mark in something. Uh -huh. okay. So, um, and Pam has been doing like TikToks and things like that. Um, with tick, with the TikToks or Facebook announcements, be proof that she's been in using that mark longer than the person who just started doing t-shirts. Would that be considered uh, in use? It could be, yes. The Yes, if she can prove that she's been using it longer than that person, yes. But if neither person has filed an actual application, the, the Patent and Trademark Office, they don't care. They care who was the first person to file for the application. So Pam may have longer use than that other person, but until she actually files the application, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So it's whoever once gets to the files the once she files the application, it then becomes an issue. Okay. So it's whoever gets to the finish line first. Sure. No, who gets to the start line first? The start line first. Right. That sounds like something we learned in Tipic Study Buddy Group. <laughs> <laughs> with race notice okay whoever gets to that deed down to the courthouse first is the winner so i guess i got some work to do in that uh -huh. <laughs> plain and simple um so uh, if they don't have a lot of questions i'm not gonna hold you up because i got a lot of information out just in that bit of short term i short time i really appreciate you so i'm gonna give it once or twice anybody have any questions for annette because then we're going to move on to our uh, maryland um coins accountability session whatever we call it today I got a Annette. Yeah. um so do you uh, in order to get the, i know you said it can cost like 15 to 1800 dollars. do you need that all up front or can you start with you like, can you can start for as cheap as like i said the the minimum cost is 250 
Um, and I, again, I have gotten away from filing applications. I haven't filed applications in the past five years. So, and the mm -hmm. cost has changed. So I would have to look it up, but I, I did look it up the other day <laughs> and I did see that the minimum cost is 250, but they, they've split them out now. So I know in our office, we charge our clients 325 to file applications or 350. I, I'm, it's either 325 or 350. Um, and there, and, and I, I can't say for sure what the reason that they split that fee and made it cheaper, but mm -hmm. I would say allow for 350 for your initial application fee. Mm -hmm. And that's all you need to start. If you allow for that 350, although you might be able to get away with the 250, I'd have to look the rule up now because like I said, they've, they switched it out and I don't do them daily anymore. So I need to actually read up on that law. But that being said, that's the minimum you can get away with to start. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. And so your office, they just, if I needed them to file, they would file for me. Yes. Okay. But let me just, and I'm not trying to discourage using any law firm or attorney, <laughs> trademark attorney. And, and, and let me just throw this caveat out there as well. They, you can't just go to any attorney and say, I want to file a trademark application. It, trademark law, patent law, copyright law is a specialty, just like I wouldn't go to a personal injury lawyer and tell them I want to file bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to go to somebody who has knowledge in that area because that's what their expertise is. That being said, you can file, you can find single, um, you know, so, so solo attorneys who do this on their own. They have their own law firms. They, you know, they, it's just them and a paralegal or two or whatever. I mean, you don't have to have a big name firm to do this for you. But like I said, if you don't really truly understand trademarks and what it entails, and you, can, and you can get a lot of the basic information from the trademark website. But if after you went to the trademark website and read over the basics about how the whole system works, if you're still unsure of really how to do it, I wouldn't try to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. I really wouldn't. I've seen people, <laughs> I've seen people try to do that. Um, I've seen people come to me and ask me to help them. And then they never do anything because they truly realize they don't understand what they're doing, yet they don't want to pay someone to help them. And so they never get whatever it is they need on file. Um, or they try mm -hmm. to do it on their own. And like I say, further down the road, they run into opposition by someone else that says, no, you can't have that mark. It's too close to my mark. And I already have mine on, on record with the Patent and Trademark Office. And then they're looking at the person telling them to cease and desist. And if they don't, they're going to sue them. And then the person gets scared because they hear sue and they don't have the money to fight for their application. So what I will say to anyone in this group or anyone you know, while I am not an attorney, nor do I have a license to practice law, I am willing to spend 30 minutes with anybody who wants to do an initial search to see if your mark is out there, to give you some level of comfort that says, hey, from what I can determine from my 30 years of experience, here's what I'm finding. Now, again, I'm not a search company. I do this on my own for people all the time, but I'm not the lawyer, but I do have good detective skills. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I'm willing to at least give you that for free for anybody who's interested. And I also work with two paralegals who have helped people get their applications on file and get them registered. But that's gonna cost you something. It won't cost you the same as an attorney, but you know, the, I can't tell you what they would charge you, but I can tell you it would be cheaper than paying an attorney or a law firm. Um, so if, if that's something that you wanna do down the road, please feel free to reach out to me um, my cell phone number, if you don't mind me sharing that, Pam. Oh, it's up to you. Just be aware that this does go on YouTube 
And I don't want to hear later telling people stop calling me. I'm just letting you know no. that happens all the time. <laughs> no, I, I don't mind. Okay. Um, it, it, my cell phone is 240-997-3505. Um, I prefer you text me first to tell mm -hmm. me, hey, I would like to call you and talk to you because, and then tell me where you got my number from so I'll know who I'm talking to. And then I'll call you back. You know, leave your, you know, leave me a message or send me a text with your information and I'll reach out to you. Um, and like I said, I will for the group that's attending here today mm -hmm. or as a part of the group um, of Maryland Coins, I will offer to anyone who's attending today um, a 30 minute session to just do a search to help you search to see if your mark is potentially out, if that's something you are looking to do in the future. If not, don't worry about it. Uh, after that- I get first dibs because I frustrated myself. That's why I was like, I need somebody. Okay, and DeAndra was in the right place at the right time. So mm -hmm. I just thank you. I get first dibs, everybody. I'm just letting y'all know. Thank so, you, Annette. Like I, I said, I, I, I can offer to do that for you. If you <laughs> actually want to proceed to do something, then we have to come to some kind of arrangement of whether you're going to do it on your own or you're going to get help. I'll at least do an initial free consultation for 30 minutes search for you. Okay. Thank I'm you letting you know that. I need help because I tried it my own and I mm -mm. pay y'all. <laughs> Some things just you got to just pay so you can move on with your life. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you, Annette. So which site will we go, we go to, to trade um, patent.com to do a search to see if someone no, has a name? You would go to www uspto dot gov so that's uspto dot gov oh, okay. that is the and she's uh pat pam's putting in the chat uh that is the website for the patent and trademark offices website okay. where you would go to actually file your applications get your general information um and they have it set up based on patents or trademarks, you would click on the trademark tab. Mm -hmm. And if you, once you click on the trademark tab, it has some broken down categories and it will say trademark basics. And you can go through the reading of the basics. And I think they have a couple of videos as well to show you how to do that. And they lay out all the steps and tell you exactly what you need to do. And, and that's it. great. They've done a, a really good job of putting that out there for anybody. But I tell you from experience, if you can read through that and understand it, you're welcome to try it. People can do it. You can do it. It's not like you have to pay someone. But if you do have some challenges understanding what you're reading, um, then you probably need some help. So. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, I have a question. This is Eldana Douglas. Um, but your initial um, application, do you need to bring in anything else? Do you need to submit anything else other than the application? You, you have to have a copy of what you want trademarked. So you have to have a picture of what it is that you want to be trademarked. Um, a trademark, just so people are clear, uh, clear and, it, and if you go to that website, it will explain to you um, what a trademark is of whatever, but basically it's a symbol, a phrase, uh, a logo or a word that represents your company or a product or service that you're offering from other products or services that are already on the market or potentially on the market. And so that's what you would call, you're gonna trademark that to protect your, your particular design or word, and it can just be words. Doesn't have to be a picture, doesn't have to have a logo. You can just, eat the only thing I will make a caveat and say, you cannot trademark your own name. Yeah. Mm. So. Hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'm, okay, but um, people, cause I know that, uh, what's her name? Um, Beyonce was trying to get their daughter blue name copyrighted, uh -huh. so they cannot do that, right? I don't know what the process ended up on that. I do recall her filing the application. I don't know if they finally got a way around it or not. Um, 
because I don't think that they were able to file just to trademark her name in general, because you have to attach mm. it to services. You have to attach it to a mm. class of services or goods. Mm -hmm. They so got the money. I'm, I'm sure that they it did out. that. I'm sure that they office right. They, again, they right. The they hired right. somebody, and she does. She does have her name on products and serve on products at least on clothing, right. probably music or whatever. So that being said. Uh, I'm sure they found a way around it to get her name, but just in general, the average person cannot just trademark. <laughs> like I can't trademark in that Spriggs, you know. Mm -hmm. So we ain't got that type of money. My pockets ain't that deep, but they got it. They they <laughs> right. gonna come up with something. Her name yeah. will be patent. There's no doubt about it. Because Bianca got her name patent as well on some certain things. So they got the money. Now I the was money. gonna, I was gonna say, and if if I know y'all have to go, I should have. I wish someone had asked me this question before. I could have looked it up for you and told you. Have you have time uh, and then okay. if you need to. Let me see if I can do a quick search to find it. Because I remember when she applied for it and I was like, oh, I wonder if she's going to be able to get away with it. And I know that there was some pushback from the Patent and Trademark Office on it. So... While she's doing that, I just want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, if you're coming, we are having our next Merlin Coin meet and greet at um, one of my new favorite spa days. So we're having a spa day because you're going to have to take care of yourselves, right? We're going to do medis and petties. Um, and it's going to be November 5th. I used to say November 12th, but I'm going to change it to November the 5th. Um, so the details are coming soon. And I hope to see all of you there. It's going to be in Laurel. So it's halfway between Baltimore, halfway between where I am. Angela, because Angela be fussing at me. Um, so if y'all can find some stuff up in Baltimore, we're gonna come to Baltimore too. Mary, I see you are so excited about this Betty Petty Day. Yeah, Pam, stop lying on me. <laughs> <laughs> and then whenever you're ready, you know I'm just silly. So whenever you yeah, ready, I was back, just let me know. I was looking to see. Um there are some blue ivy marks out there, but again. Um, what I'm finding is I don't see Beyonce's name or her, you know, there, I don't know all the entities that they have. Let's put it that way. Uh, I see mm -hmm. one that could potentially be theirs, but, um, I, again, I don't know there. I think I recognize, yeah, I think I recognize the entity that they use to create it because it's coming out of California. Yeah, here it is. Okay. Uh, it's dead. So, oh, okay. Let, uh, let me go back. So, they actually created a company for to file for her. I mean, to file on behalf of of them let me let me just double check something but anyway that being said uh just put this like if she if they tried to um file for her name alone they wouldn't have got it they had to do something different uh, Okay. So yeah, they did. They did. Um, they have. They did file some, as I said before, but most of them, it looks like, most of them appear to be what they call dead. They're not existing. Like they filed for one, two, three, four, five. Six. They have one live application out. Actually, yeah, one live one. They have four dead ones. And they actually have one for her name. I take that back. I don't know what the step What's the four see? dead ones? I want to know. I want to know. What's the four dead ones in there? The four, they Can have one them? Blue Ivy Carter, Blue Ivy Carter Glory 4, Blue Ivy Carter New York City, NYC. 
and Blue Ivy Ink, and those are dead. So someone else could actually mm. pick those up and and try to refile for him. They do have a Blue Ivy Carter, which is actually her name, mm-hmm. and it's still alive. And let me see what the status of it is. So they filed that is what I told you before, an intent to use. And that was as uh, they got an extension in May of 2022. And actually that mm-hmm. was their, that was their third extension to file Blue Ivy Carter, which is her full name. So I would have to read through that file to see what the grounds were, but at least we know they, they filed it as an intent to use application, which means they mm-hmm. obviously hadn't started using and they can't, they have to prove that they can use it. And they filed it in the area of fragrances, keychains. I don't know why they did that. DVD, CDs, baby teething rings. Oh, so baby products. And then they have a bunch of, I oh, hope that cost them a bunch of money. Entertainment services. <laughs> Playing cards, hair accessories, mugs, plastic keychains, bags, handbags, books, baby carriages, baby strollers, baby teething rings, DVDs, CDs, and visual sound recordings, which is music, mm-hmm. uh, metal keychains, and then fragrances and body products. Oh, they tried everything. Yeah, they were trying to cover all the bases. So it's still active, and but they haven't shown use yet. Um, so that's why they keep asking for extensions. They don't have use in all of those areas yet. I'm sure that's why they keep asking for the extensions. I think oh, somebody make it happen. I'm I sorry. think tried to sue. Um, if I remember the um, article, it was a while back. Someone was suing her because their daughter or their child's name is blue as well. And someone it was in litigations because they wanted to patent the child's name and I think the child was older or something like that. So it had been going on, it's an ongoing issue. And that's why she, it's probably why she has added those other endings to it to try to get it. And that person, I mean, I don't know why they, I don't think that it's a celebrity. So they either have a lot of money to keep going to court because Beyonce probably doesn't care about that money. So, and she, it's probably going to eventually go into her favor. I think it's just that it's still in court. Yeah, as a matter mm-hmm. of fact, you're absolutely right. I just opened up another tab and they have two oppositions filed against their application, one of which was terminated. Right. But it went from 20, this is goes to show you, the application to oppose their app, to, uh, to oppose Beyonce's application or her do- application for her daughter's name started in May 2017 and it just ended in tw- uh, 2020. So that was three years of them going back and forth, trying to, uh, the person trying to sue um, Beyonce and, and uh, Jay-Z over that application. I think they're trying to do their other, their other two kids as well. So they're trying to make it a corporation. Um, I mean, some type, you know, and that's probably why the, the baby products, but I mean, that's here and there, but it's just interesting to know how, you know, when someone, you know, just like Pam said, when she spoke about her logo, that, you know, you would think that you put all that effort into it and then someone says it's too close to mine and, you know, you have to go and prove other Right. Sorry and actually, if, unless this person is related, which I don't think they are, they actually won. Uh, they ended up with a registration for Blue Ivy by itself, and she filed for event planning and management services. And she actually was able to get a registration. So she probably had that on record before Beyonce did. And that's why she fought mm. back, because that was her actual <laughs> business name. So. Oh, okay. The whole there name you go. Blue Ivy Carter? So wow. no, she didn't have the whole. She's the lady who won. She had a an event oh. planning company called Blue Ivy, and they were trying oh, okay. to register Blue Ivy, which they got pushback for. And then they went and added Carter to do her whole name, which typically they don't allow. And so far, they 
they haven't proved, you know, that the, the PTO has not granted them the right to register her name. And typically they teach us that you can't actually trademark your own name. So that's why I said that. Mm. So she, they haven't won yet and it's possible they won't win, but that's what they, they teach you is that you can't, you can't trademark your own name. But because the other lady only used Blue Ivy as her company name, she actually beat them, but it took her three years to do it. Wow, and a lot more money. <laughs> yeah, a lot of money. Oh wow! Thank you so much. Um, so I know it's five o'clock, y'all, but um, and we were running late. But I would love if you have any last minute questions for Annette, so we can get started with our Facebook, um, so our accountability group. So Mary, Denise, Cindy, I'm calling all of y'all names. Our Eldana, any last questions, Angela? No, I don't have any questions. No. And then I want to say thank you because I learned a lot today, even in the yes. short time that we were on here. And I definitely would be calling you because I'm one of those people. Sometimes I can do stuff. Sometimes I can't. I just believe in just paying. And so I can just get it done. OK, <laughs> this is one of those times I'm just going to pay uh -huh. to get it done. I know I can do it myself. But I, one time I got frustrated. I just I've been procrastinating about it. So I need to get this done because this, I'm serious about what we're doing here in Maryland Coins. No. And I would hate for somebody to come and take that away from me after the work I no. put in. You know? Especially um, since you so already had someone you. try to, to hack your name already. And oh, yeah. They were selling my own t-shirts to my own people. I said, what the, what the, what the? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was funny, but it wasn't funny. Like, what? So, um, because <laughs> we already had Bridget, who was our marketing person, do it for us. But somehow yeah. they got it and they tried to come in and they got in the group. Because DeAngela's a moderator, she let them in the group. I'm playing with you, DeAngela. But they came in the group and was actually trying to sell, sell the t-shirts to the people in the group. I said, now nah, that's bold. People are bold. Um, anyway, I just they were bold. So I just want to thank you for your years of expertise. I really appreciate your time with us today. Um, any last compliments? Because we're going to go to the next phase of today's session. If not, Annette, I will be calling you. I'll be texting you first, even though I know we already talked. But I'm going to text you first. I'm, I'm one of those people that like to text me because I might be in the middle of something. But right. thank you so much for joining Melon Coin today. I really appreciate you, and I really appreciate DeAngela for recommending you today. And you're with all that said. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So join us oh, every you. Sunday at 4 p.m. for the Maryland Coins Notary Show. If you're not part of the Facebook group, join us on Maryland Coins Facebook group. If you are in Maryland and want to become a title insurance producer, join our Maryland Coins Tipic Study Buddy Group. We got you all covered, right, ladies? So on mm. that note, have a good weekend, and we'll see you later. Thank you. But don't Thank move. Thank you. <laughs> no.